What is a revival and why does it matter? Who better to ask than Dr. Russell Moore, a noted theologian and preacher and former dean of the School of Theology at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, Dr. Moore is now the editor-in-chief of Christianity Today magazine. Dr. Moore, it's so great to have you here. Paint us a picture of the evangelical church in America right now. What is going on in the Protestant church that inspired or impacted this revival? Well, you know, we're in a day where there's so much bad news, and it's easy to just be expecting bad news all the time that when something really extraordinarily good happens, it can it can take us by surprise. And that's what's happening here. I mean, our our understanding of revival is uh, is not something really different from the normal Christian life, but an intensification of it, uh, in which people turn to prayer, to repentance of sin, to uh, forgiveness giving one another, to seeking the Lord's direction in their lives. And we've seen um, many moments in American history where that has happened. Think of the Great Awakenings, uh, for instance, and something like that appears to be happening uh, not just at Asbury, but in several other places as well. And are there specific issues that the community is struggling with, maybe that the Catholic Church has struggled with before or is struggling with right now as well? Well, I think one of the main things is this uh, understanding of the, the next generation. I mean, there, there are many people, millennials, Gen Z, who have looked around and had much to be disappointed about uh, with uh, evangelical churches and with Catholic churches. But uh, God is still at work. And, and this is uh, one more example that God, God normally... Uh, comes in and works in surprising and uh, seemingly out of the blue ways sometimes. Well, with and so that, it's, it's really cheering to see this happening. And with that out of the blue mentality, why Asbury? Why do you think this happened at a small Kentucky college? Or what's special about Asbury University? Or isn't it at all? I, I'm not sure. I think what Asbury would say is that there's nothing unique about uh, Asbury except that God chose to work there. You had, I mean, it's a it's a great school and and really uh, really uh, respected. But I don't think that's why revival came there. I think instead the spirit, uh, as Jesus said, the spirit blows where wind blows where it wishes, and the spirit moves uh, where he wishes. And I think that's what's happened here. And one interesting note, as you noted, is the idea of young people, the motor behind this revival. Gen Z is known for being the least religious generation to date. What does mm -hmm. this revival signal to you about the faith of Gen Z? Well, for one thing, notice what happened here. This was entirely a Gen Z uh, moment. As a matter of fact, all of the the older people were trying to figure out uh, what to do uh, <laughs> because the Gen Z, they were the ones who were uh, praying and staying in the chapel and, and it was moving in that way. So it wasn't a ministry to the younger generation. It was the younger generation ministering to one another and then ministering to uh, the rest of the body of Christ and to the rest of the world. And that's, that's really encouraging because that's exactly what we need to see. Uh, not, not that we have great programs for younger people, but that we understand that the, the gospel moves forward with those next generations. And that there is hope there. What role did social media play in this event? Have we ever seen a religious m movement spread through social media like this? Well, I know there were some people who were really concerned about uh, social media, and I had some friends who said, I just, I don't like that people are showing up to take selfies of themselves uh, there and so forth. But my my understanding is that that always uh, happens in revivals. You think of uh, First Great Awakening, Benjamin Franklin uh, would come to listen to George Whitfield because he was just fascinated by what was going on. That doesn't alarm me at all. I think that what has happened, though, is that social media, uh, it's enabled people to know what's happening there much quicker. Mm. So for some people, it was they wanted to go to Asbury and participate in it. But I think even more than that, a, a lot of other people were able to, to pray better, uh, knowing that they're praying for Asbury. And, and, and frankly, Matsi, just to keep from giving up hope. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy for us to, to just have lowered expectations of what God can do. Well, with that in mind, you wrote an article about Asbury called Celebrating Revival in a Cynical Age. You say that cynicism is the product not of a fighting spirit, but of a broken heart. Do you see that playing out in the responses to the revival? 
I, I did for a little while, but not nearly to the degree that I thought I would. So there, there were some people who were initially really cynical about what was going on, mm. and they thought that this would turn into some sort of a marketing uh, endeavor, but that's not what happened. Uh, the, the school handled this really well, in my view. And so Tom McCall, who's one of the most respected uh, theologians in evangelical Christianity, uh, wrote a piece for Christianity Today about uh, how uh, amazing it was for him to to see this. This is not somebody given to enthusiasms of of various (laughs) kinds. It was really extraordinary. And I think that as time has gone by, even many of the people who were cynical have looked at this and said, okay, they're this this is not something that's being um, that, that's being manipulated. Uh, this is something that's authentic. And was it important that the college worked hard to guard the students, not letting some of the bigger names that wanted to show up both to cover the story? We respectfully waited to cover it this week. Um, yeah. w- what? How did that help? It 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 was it was completely, I I can't even describe how important that was, that the school handled this the right way and said, this is something that God is doing among these uh, students, and we're not going to have hangers on and and people to come in to try to co-opt it or uh, or to market through it. And at many points, uh, the school administrators would say, we don't really know what to do next, uh, which was strikingly authentic and uh, and but I think they handled it at every step in the right way which again when we look around and we see so many uh, religious institutions handling multiple things in the wrong way when you see a group of people who have wisdom and humility that's that's a model for the rest of us Absolutely. Where the Catholic Church is in revival here in the U.S. right now with the Eucharistic revival, any pointers for that as we follow in those and bring into the body of Christ that spirit of revival and calling on the Holy Spirit? Well, I think the main thing uh, to learn from this is is to have uh, high expectations and to uh, and to actually pray for God to do what he says he will do. And then uh, and then when God shows up, respond the way he tells us to with uh, with repentance and with uh, love of God and love of each other and faith in Christ and um, and uh, all of the, the blessings that God gives to us that way. Amen. With open hearts. Thank you so much, Dr. Moore. Thank you, Monsignor.